I can I can remember and I remember very fondly my first experience to research because it was a huge learning process to me and also a very challenging process but I guess it sort of reinfor reinforced my decision to sort of take that path and it was um, my final year in my final year of medical school we had to carry out a research project and that re research project was part of um, a graded assessment for for your medical degree. So I, I was looking for a mentor. I, I knew I had to work, I wanted to work in HIV. So I approached a professor in my, in my medical school who was doing work on HIV drug resistance. At that particular time, they, they had just started rolling out or there was increasing access to antiretroviral treatment to prevent transmission of the virus from mother to child. But one of the things that you would find most commonly in a lot of African countries and in that setting is that a lot of the data that is used to create guidelines does not come from these places. Sometimes it's extrapolations of data from abroad. And there's a huge importance of carrying out research locally to then inform on what the policy should be. So at that time, we really wanted to look at what the prevalence of HIV drug resistance was in these women who had received the drugs to prevent transmission of the virus to their babies because there was no local data available. And I wanted to make a comparison looking at what the prevalence was in rural settings with the urban settings because obviously there are access issues depending on where you find yourself within the country. And, you know, I started by having to go through the ethical clearance process to get an authorization to carry out my study. So my mentor, you know, we sat down, we, we designed the study, we, we made sure that we had dotted the I's and crossed the, the T's in terms of the ethical issues. And to get the ethical clearance, I had to drop off, you know, my research proposal in an office in the Ministry of Health. And I paid, you know, $20 processing fee. Two weeks later, I come back to the ministry and I pick up, you know, a signed ethical clearance form authorizing me to carry on with the study. No evaluation report whatsoever, no questions asked, and I was going to be collecting blood samples, clinical information from women in multiple sites within the country. First of all, I mean, that's mind-boggling. That's tr a study dealing directly with human subjects. And for $20, I just got a pass to do that. You know, so I asked my, my, my mentor, <laughs> is that it? <laughs> and he said, yeah, that actually pretty much is all you have to do. So I was the one on the field. I, I spent a period, it took me about eight months to, to get this women recruited into my study. So I was doing the process of informed consent myself. And I had my informed consent form that I was going through with the patients and talking to them, explaining stuff to them and telling them I would bring back their results to the centers because the drug resistance testing we're going to do normally costs about $250. So they would normally not be able to access that type of testing. But if you give back the clinical information to their doctors, then they can weed out the drugs they're resistant to and know what treatment to give them. And it just... I, I collected the samples and I, I, I got consent from some of the participants. Some of them refused to participate. We respected that. And then the samples were processed. I came to the U.S. at the CDC where we were, we were working in collaboration with the CDC and I processed the samples. I got trained to process the samples and then returned to Cameroon, went back to the centers and gave the results to their attending physicians. And some of them had their, tr their treatments modified based on that result. And it, it just really drove home how useful research can be, especially if you're able to take the information that you get and then feed it back into that system. But one of the other things that it highlighted, you know, when I was carrying out this study, in the rural centers, one of, when I was visiting the rural centers uh, in some of the sites, one of the things that I noticed was in some of the centers, the nurses in charge of giving the drugs to the women told me, we frequently run out of drugs. 
So sometimes we go through six months without any drugs to, to give to the women. And at the time, there were two drugs that we, they were giving to the women. And there was one drug that was meant to be given once during labor. And there was another drug that the women had to take for a month after delivery. So I asked, what happens when you run out of one? Say, so we just substitute it with the other at the same dose. So, so, and these nurses had supposedly undergone treat, uh, training to learn how to prescribe these this drugs. Here was I, completely scandalized. And I went to see the um, head of the, the, the unit, like the, the, the person in charge of treatment centers in that region of the country. And she just told me, this can't get to the ministry. You can't say this anywhere because that will make me look bad. But I said, clearly there's something wrong. The message is not getting across. It, it drives drug resistance to get women, uh, nurses substituting the wrong drugs. It increases the side effects because they're giving a completely different drug at the same dose as the drug that is not available. And it just completely messes up the whole system. You know, but I wrote a report and I gave it to this woman because I had to follow the, ch the channel of authority, but I don't know where it ever ended up because no one ever said anything about it. You know, so it again revealed some of the, the difficulties that you have when you're dealing with, with, with settings such as this. So my very first experience with research was a mi mixed bag. While I was able to give useful information to the patients and their physicians to help to improve on their treatments, some of the stuff I found out that could be improved probably got swept under the carpet because someone didn't want to look bad. <laughs>